Hey everyone! Today, I'm going to teach you how to add Google Maps to your Flutter apps. I'll go over how to add map markers, create info windows, make HTTP requests to the Google Directions API for route information, display polylines, and animate the map camera. Before we get started, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe, as it really helps out the channel. If you want to learn how to build real-world apps with Flutter, check out my courses on launchclub.io. And with that, let's get started. In a new project, let's add the necessary packages. First we have Dio, which lets us send HTTP requests to the Google Directions API for route information. Next we have Flutter Polyline Points which lets us decode polyline strings into the latitude and longitude points necessary to display the route. And the last package, of course, is Google Maps Flutter to display a map to our users. To use Google Maps, we need an API key from the Google console. You can get one by heading over to this link, creating a project, and generating an API key. In the API library, you have to enable the Maps SDK for iOS and Maps SDK for Android. While you're here, you should also enable the Directions API. Now let's go into our main Android manifest in the Android folder and add a couple of lines specifying our Google Maps API key. For iOS, you have to open up the iOS folder in Xcode and go into the app delegate. At the top, let's import Google Maps and then inside of the application function, add the line gmsservices.provideAPI key with your API key. Inside main.dart, we can add some code to display our map. Create a stateful map screen widget, and return a scaffold with the body of Google Map. We have to specify the initial camera position, which I'll make a static variable for. These are the coordinates of San Francisco. Zoom is the zoom level of the camera. The lower the number, the less zoomed in the map camera is. The max zoom level is usually 21, depending on the location. Let's set the initial camera position to initial camera position and disable the my location button and the zoom controls as we won't be using them. When we run the app, the map appears. Now we want to add a floating action button that centers the map camera on San Francisco. To do this, we need to add a Google Map Controller variable. Don't forget to dispose it in the dispose method. Instead of instantiating a Google Map controller like a scroll controller, the Google Map widget has an onMap created callback with a controller that we can assign to our variable. We can then create a floating action button that has a center icon, and the onPressed calls the animate camera method to move the camera to our initial camera position. We also should change the material app's primary color to white and hide the debug banner. Tapping on the floating action button animates the camera back to the original position. Taking a look at the UI, we can see we have two markers, the origin and the destination. When the user long presses on the map, we set the origin marker. The next long press sets the destination marker. Right under Google Map Controller, we'll add the two markers. Note that these are null at first, which means we won't display them until the user selects the marker positions. The Google Map widget takes in a parameter called markers that takes in a set of markers. We can create an empty set and use collection ifs to only add the origin and destination markers if they are not null. To add long press functionality, we can add on long press, which gives a lat long position. So let's make a private method called add marker and create this below our main method. If the origin is not set, or both the origin and destination are set, then we want to set the origin marker. This means that we know the origin must be set in the else block so it's safe to define the destination marker. We call setState to update our UI and instantiate our origin marker. Every marker needs a unique marker ID. We can add an info window with the title origin. This displays an info window when the user taps on the marker. You can also define a subtitle, snippet, and on tap for the window. By default, the marker color is red, 
but we want to set it to green using a bitmap descriptor. The position is set to the passed in lat long. Then we just reset the destination marker by setting it to null. In the else block, we define a destination marker similar to our origin marker, with the color set to blue. And that's all we have to do to add markers when we long press on the map. Tapping on a marker displays the info window. Now let's add an app bar. Scaffold has an app bar with Google Maps as the title text and two text button actions that animate the camera to the corresponding position. I define tilt, which will angle the camera when it animates to the position. We only want to show the text button if its marker is present. Let's do the same for the destination button. When we tap on the buttons, our camera animates nicely. Our next task is to fetch information about the route between our origin and destination using Google's Directions API. Create a directions repository.dart file that contains the class directions repository. We'll instantiate a DO client using our constructor and also add the base URL for the API. Notice how we specify JSON to make sure that all of our requests have JSON responses. Now create an asynchronous method called getDirections that takes in the origin and destination's coordinates and returns the future directions. We'll define our directions model in a bit. To make the get requests with the necessary parameters, we can use do.get and pass in our origin's coordinates and destination's coordinates. We also have to pass in our Google API key, which I'll define in a separate file called .env.dart. Remember to import the file at the top of the directions repository. Once the get request is completed, we check if the response is successful, and then return directions.frommap.response.data. This factory constructor will be part of our directions model, and convert the response data of type map string dynamic into directions. Note that I'm not doing any error handling here for simplicity. I'm just returning null. Let's create our directions model. In a new file, we have class directions. This has lat long bounds to allow us to center the camera on the origin and destination, a list of point lat longs to draw our polyline, the total distance as a string, and the total duration as a string. Our factory constructor takes in map string dynamic. If we take a look at the JSON blob, we can see that the routes key contains all the information we need. First, check if a route is not available, and then get the route information if it is. Next, we can create our lat long bounds using the northeast and southwest coordinates. Distance and duration are already calculated for us, so we can grab the string versions of each. Finally, we can return our directions model by passing in the corresponding values. Here we use the polyline points package to decode the overview polyline passed back in the JSON. If you want to get the written directions for each leg of the route, you can parse them by iterating over the steps and accessing the HTML instructions key. Import the directions model into the directions repository. In our map screen, we need to add a directions variable called info. After we set our destination marker, we want to request the directions info from the API using our directions repository. This means our add marker method has to be asynchronous, as we need to await a future. Then we update our state and set info to directions. We should also set info to null when the user selects the origin. After a user selects an origin and destination, we want to animate the camera to the lat long bounds of our directions model. Go to the floating action button and animate the camera to the lat long bounds with a padding of 100, only if the info is not equal to null. This way, if the user doesn't have any route info, we just center the camera on San Francisco. Displaying the distance and duration container on top of the map is simple. Wrap the Google Map widget in a stack widget with alignment center. If info is not equal to null, then we display a container position 20.0 from the top. The container has a border radius and box shadow. The child is a text widget with a total distance and total duration text. The Google Maps widget has a polylines parameter, which is a set of polylines. If info is not equal to null, 
we know our list of point lat longs is present. We create a polyline with a unique polyline ID, set the color to red, width to 5, and points is a list of lat long points. When we run our app, we see that all of our features are working as intended. Our direction info is displayed when we long press to add the origin and destination markers. Tapping on the text buttons and floating action button animates the map. And tapping on either marker opens up an info window. If the API fails to return route info, the app doesn't show any route info and still continues to function. And that's all for this video. For more content like this, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in learning how to build complete Flutter apps with the backend, you can check out my full Flutter courses on launchclub.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.